So you shoot your record up there, 217. And Jay said he had a talk with you. And he starts talking about your reloading <laughs> process. <laughs> and yeah. he's asking about, you know, sorting this and sorting that. And you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't do none of that crap. So, so tell us, <laughs> what is it that you do? Are you willing well, to disclose that? Yes. I mean, and it's actually evolved a little bit since then. But back in those days, I, I didn't do much of anything. I mean, I, I, I was... One, that first record was shot with brand new brass and fire. So virgin brass. Virgin brass. Um, Lapua brass? No. Okay. It was not. I, I saw the hesitation there. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, well, well, you can I'll, disclose, I'll you. disclose as much as you want. Okay. I don't, well, okay. I, well, when it comes to just, just the reloading process, in those days, I did. I prefer to shoot new brass. It's oh, it just seemed to shoot good for me, mm -hmm. and it went in and out of the gun easy. I, mm -hmm. On occasion, I'd have some that was a little small, and I would get uh, I'd blow primers and whatnot, you know, headspace uh -huh. issues. So I kind of then got to where I at least tried to once fire it before I before I did it. But I didn't have uh, you know barrels for fire forming, and I hated using my good ones for that. So I tried to stay away from it, but. I mean, I don't, I don't clean brass. Um, I don't clean primer pockets. I don't uniform primer pockets. When I got, a, you know, new cases, I would, I had to turn those. So I neck turn those and inside and outside chamber to load them and shoot. Them. Yeah. Do you kneel? Never have. No. You don't kneel? No, but I don't shoot my brass a lot. Mm -hmm. And I've got a lot of it. I probably should and I know it's all good stuff, but I just I have access to a an dealer now that I could I may start doing that more. Okay. So yeah, so Jay said he talked to you and, and he starts asking about uniformer pockets, like I don't do that. Cleaning bread, uh, I don't do that. You know, this yeah. I don't do any I don't do anything. And yeah. uh, <laughs> that has you know, I uh well you know I was I was a, a home builder. I was in construction and I got to shoot less and less because I just couldn't afford all the time that was needed in the reloading room so one day right. I just decided you know what I'm just gonna go out and, and test and everything that doesn't matter I'm just gonna get rid of it get rid of it get rid of it and that's what I started doing I I full-length size dirty brass because I figured you know what if I were out to die I'll just buy another die if it's gonna save me hours and hours and hours yeah I'll just buy another die and uh, I have yet to wear out the dye with dirty brass, which is whatever, you know. So I started doing that, and now I don't even clean my brass. And, oh, you got to clean your primer pockets. Well, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't remember the last time I cleaned a primer pocket. It's yeah, I don't either. Uh, maybe I in the early days. So what I do now is... I actually I anneal my dirty brass just as it comes off the box I anneal it I, I lube it I full length size it I wipe it I prime it well I actually chamfer deburr it prime it load it let's go yeah. you know what I mean well I have a saying when it comes to all of our reloading stuff and preparation I've always said that if you think it matters it matters and Everybody has different comfort levels about what they're comfortable with. But the key to me is you can't go to the line with any doubt in your head. You know, you can't go out there and, man, I, I, probably, I wish I'd have been this brass or I wish I'd have done this. or Because the first time you wing a shot out that's weird, that's that's the first thing that pops in your head is, man, I, I knew I should have done such and such. Right. And then after and that, so, it's downhill. And you can't you can't go to the line with doubt. And I'll give you an example. Hang on one second. In um, 2015, that Missoula match, when I shot the 17, and then, you know, just a month later was the national. So I'm home and I'm getting blown ammo for both of those matches, actually. And so one day I was going to do, okay, today I'm going to do uh, my team match ammo for work or for nationals which i mean i 
I take pretty good care of all my loading, but team ammo is, it's a little bit extra scrutiny. And so, and I just needed 50. So I'm, I'm loading along and I get to the very last round and I look down at my powder measure dispenser that I use. And I noticed somewhere, somehow I turned, I changed it and I put in a grain too much. It was set a grain high. <clears throat> and I thought, great. Now, how long has it been like that? I don't know. Yeah. So I pulled the previous four bullets and measured the powder and, and they were all the same. So it was just that very last one. However, now at this point, I'm, I've got down in my mind about that whole box of ammo, even though I checked, you know, and mm -hmm. it, everything seemed to be okay, but uh, I, I had doubt about it. So that's, this is not team ammo anymore. And so I took that up to Missoula and shot it, and that's what I shot the 217 with. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it was okay, but I had doubt. <clears throat> and so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep it's, it to the team. It's a common thing, right? When, when, uh, when you have your loading block and, you, 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 and then you see the, the pile of, or you know, very slight pile of, or a few kernels around your loading block. Yeah. And then you look at it and you go, where did that come from? Right. Exactly. And that just ruined the whole block. Yeah. You, you can't you can't see bullets because there's a few kernels laying there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's incredible, and and that's correct. Uh, I I did not eliminate those things from my procedures until I tested them multiple times and proved to myself like, okay, cleaning primer pockets doesn't matter. Ah, good. Now I can eliminate it. So now I can load with 100% confidence. You know? Right. Uh, same thing with uh, not cleaning my brass before. Because what I used to do is I used to clean my brass and kneel it, size it. Then I clean it again to get all the lube off, lube off the brass. And it was just time and time and time. The problem with cleaning, I use wet tumbling media. And, uh, you know, I had to clean it. And I only do it for about 20 minutes. But then I had to dry the brass. Yeah, and you know now a few hours went by, where now in the same amount of time that it would take me to clean the brass, I'm done loading. Right. So yeah, definitely sped the process up. Uh, what about bullet prep? Do you do anything? Well, I've always been a bit of a believer in in sorting bullets, but the only sorting I do is overall length, base to tip. Now, where did you get that? Well. It kind of came out of the 2009 U.S. team. We were shooting the 140s, and uh, I think one of our team captains came up with that. He, he said that can sometimes cause a problem. But but let me tell you, the reason I sort like that is because I point. Well, before you go any further on this, I want to make a point to our viewers. See, this is what happens when we tell you the truth. This tells you that we ain't. These guys are giving you everything they have. So it's up to you to, to believe it or not. But, I mean, we interviewed Bob Bach, and he told us how he came up with the overall length sorting, and he found out that that's what mattered the most. That's now, where I got it from. I so, wasn't going to say his name, but it was Bob Bach. Well, yeah. Bob Bach, I interviewed him uh, uh, last week, and he told me about the overall length, and he discussed why he believed that. And remember, Mr. Bach has an uh, engineering degree. Very smart. And he's a national champion. National champion. Very smart man. And I don't know if you know this, but he invented the ultrasonic toothbrush. Seems like I'd heard that, but I don't. I don't anyway, we talked about that on that episode. But anyway, so what I'm getting at is Mr. Bach talked about that. And uh, again, because I, I, I've told multiple people that to this day, because, of course, I learned that from Mike Downey, right? Yeah. He was on the team with us. He so. was on the team with you guys. <laughs> and now I've told some people the same thing. I'm like, well, just sort based overall length. And of course they think I'm crazy, right? But anyway, so continue. So you, you sort overall length and point. Well, and, and sometimes I point, sometimes I don't. I'm actually, I, I did that religiously for a long time, but now I've waffled a little bit. The, the newer bullets are a little bit better than they used to be as far as the tips. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I would point, um, and that's the reason, main reason I sorted them is because okay, I got this group that are within two thousandths of each other. 
-hmm. So you could point that group together and not worry about overpointing or underpointing. You know, they all get the same point, amount of point anyway. Okay. And then I would keep the, all those to you know different batches. I sorted in groups of two thousands. Uh, but I still I still sort whether I point them or not. I still sort them for, and shoot them only shoot black bullets together. So you shoot short to long or long to short? Yes. <laughs> as long as they're together? Well, I, I'll end up with my zero. You know, if I sort a thousand bullets, you'll have oh. a, a, a big group right in the middle and then a little bit smaller on each side of that. And then yeah, what I call the outliers. And the outliers end up coming fowlers or, or uh, fire forming bullets, whatever. It's usually just those three in the middle. But, you know, out of a thousand bullets, my center group, what I call the zero group, will be you know, six or seven hundred. Okay, so that's going to be all your your uh, your match stuff. Your yeah, exactly. Your big stage stuff. Yeah.